Hello. <laughs> Hello, my Florida Garden Escape channel, and welcome back. I'm happy to have you guys here. It's a little nifty out here, um, but not too bad. So today we're not doing any chores or anything like that. Um, we're going to do some how-tos on watering. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Don't forget to leave us a like, subscribe, and hit that bell down below so you don't miss out on our new videos. Let's get into some great tips. So guys, we are located in zone... 8b um in our florida area um we're very humid our humid is always high um if you live in any climate like this then some of these tips are going to be really great for you um we'll also give tips between city and out in the country things like that um but let's go ahead and start with some uh real <laughs> first start start with what water you're going to want to use what kind and things like that first things first if you live in the city i've always i've said this probably a lot i'm just going to say it again you don't want to use your city water because city will put chemicals in their water that can be harmful to your plants and you don't want to eat the chemicals that they put in the water as it could be chlorine chlorine things like that so you definitely don't want to use city water on fruits vegetables and plants like that flowers yeah you you might want to but i wouldn't risk it just because it could be harmful to the plant as well um and you'll have different reactions to different flowers and things like that one great tool that is great when watering especially if you live in city limits um is a rain barrel um we have this rain barrel attached to our greenhouse um, and it flows water from the downside gutters down into it. And then this top piece is our new addition, um, which helps keep the mosquitoes out of our water. So that way, when we come out here to water, it's not a nest full of mosquitoes and we're not eat being eaten alive. Because as you guys can kind of see, it's definitely a wooded area. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. And we're going to go through with watering. So one thing with rain barrels, you want to place it somewhere where it's going to catch a lot of water. Um, we bought this off Amazon and I'll leave a, a link to it down in the description below so you guys can check it out. They have different ranges from 50 gallons, 60 gallons. Um, I definitely do love this rain catcher. It's a vinyl. Um, it's not in direct sun all day long. Um, so the material, the chemicals that the materials were made out of is not going to seep into my water, which is good. We did add this onto it to keep the mosquitoes out of it, like I mentioned. Um, and rainwater is really a good way to go because it's coming from the clouds. It's not running through any hose or anything. You don't have to worry about any chemicals being inside it, um, which is also a good thing. drop my phone there. Right, let's get these doors open. So one thing for sure that I always like to add is when it comes to watering and depending on um, what water you're using. Now if you are living in the city, city area um, and you know that your city uses chemicals to clean the water for y'all to be able to drink it, cook with it, and things like that. Um, one good thing you can do is put water in a bucket, let it sit for over 24 hours. That's going to help get all the chemicals out of it. You don't want to let it sit somewhere in the direct sunlight because whatever container you have it in those chemicals that those containers were made for made out of are going to seep into that water so you definitely don't want to do that especially if it's like plastic and things like that now another thing is with watering um how frequently you should be watering um let's go ahead and just discuss that right off the bat with the warmer temperatures, you're going to want to water more, um, especially if you don't have any, any mulch or any pine straw or anything like that covering the base of the plants. 
because that sun, especially during the summer times, will dry up that soil very quickly. So the best way to keep it all moist um, and from drying out is by adding that pine straw or the mulch so that way it holds in that water longer for you. And you're not having to water as much. Now, like me, we don't yet currently have a uh, drip system in our garden or in our greenhouse or anything like that um that'll come uh later on in time um we just come out water everything um with our big garden everything is pretty much mulched down it's got a thick layer of mulch so we don't have to water it every single day now we do have to come out and water every few days um the the big garden because it dries out after a few days just due to that heat now our greenhouse for instance i don't have a lot of pots in here that have mulch so sometimes i do have to come out here every day now currently if you guys seen our last uh tour of our greenhouse a lot of our plants are are in pots and they are being stored here for the winter time um, and with that being said, um, we have to water more in the greenhouse than we do anything else because not a lot of the plants in the greenhouse have mulch. So greenhouse, we have to pretty much water every day, especially during the hot seasons. But thankfully, a lot of our plants during the hot seasons are outside in our nursery area, um, getting used to the climates and things like that because I don't, don't want to put them from our green grow grow room in the house to out here i want to bring them out all together outside and go ahead and start getting used to those climates the sun and everything and adjust um so watering just varies if you have mulch on the base of your plant in a pot or anything you won't have to water every day um it definitely helps and saves you time um and energy now with watering how to water your plants there's several different things you can do to water your plants um for instance i'm watering my plants in my greenhouse so i'm using this to water my plants in the greenhouse it has a straight nozzle it can get right to the plant um and i'm not really too concerned with getting the leaves wet in on the plants in the greenhouse just due to it has some high humidity here um but i try not to wet the leaves because florida i'm just going to tell you guys straight up florida zone 8b our humidity is terribly high so with that being said powdery mildew um and things like that that is so easy to get on your plants just because our humidities are high so the less water on the leaves the better off it is just for the mere fact um our humidity levels are just crazy high now let's say with our big garden we will water from our hose and our hose leaks to our well which we have a filtration system on our well so it filters that water for us which is amazing but when we water we don't just spray everything from the hose um with a sprayer we actually don't even use a sprayer um if we had a drip system we would just be dripping water down it, down at the base of the plant but in our case we have a long enough hose that we can get to every single plant and we just lay the hose down at the base of that plant and with that being said we're not putting water on the leaves or anything which will cause it to have that powdery mildew and things like that because like with your squashes your your cucumbers they don't like water on their leaves too long because then they'll create that powdery mo uh, mildew or the yellow mildew that you, you'll see um and the one way to get that under control is by applying baking soda with dish uh, non-fragrance dish soap to some water and spraying it on the leaves but you only want to do that during the day so that way that way uh i was about i forgot what i said hold on so that way <laughs> the leaves can dry and they're not getting so fungy now with that being said you don't want to 
do it during at the highest peak of the sun because the sun can burn the leaves of the plants so the best time to do it is in the uh earlier in the evening times when it's starting to cool down some or first thing in the morning um, because it's not so hot um, first thing in the morning um, and the leaves will be able to dry and they won't have to sit with that powdery mildew on them um, so I would definitely advise doing it like earlier in the morning before the Sun comes up um, so that way the water on the leaves can dry and the baking soda and dish soap will actually um, actually get help get rid of that powdery mildew and it won't become such an issue for you guys so i am now going to just quickly just show you guys what i mean by watering at the base of the plants with my little watering container here so as you guys can see i'm currently watering my aloe and this aloe is actually shooting out more aloes but what i do is i just take it and i pour it in here just like with these guys these leaves that i'm currently pouring on is just weeds I'm not too concerned with getting those wet, um, but we're just coming through and watering at the base. Now, the bigger the pot, the more water it'll need, but keep in mind, guys, some of these plants here are our herbs, so the roots of them are pretty much at the base, which means it'll get a lot more of the water quicker and first, which is good. Pretty much, we water always at the base. You don't ever really want to water on top of the leaves heavily. Now, let's say you're watering and you're switching from one plant to another plant. It's okay if you slightly get some water on your leaves. It's not a big deal, okay? It's not going to cause a big damage to them. Um, you'll have your tricks and your tips and your things that you'll need to do to treat it if it gets any of that powdery mildew or anything like that. But if you don't have a high humidity, you have... You don't have so much of an issue with the powdery mildew in that compared to us zone 8b's here in florida we have high humidity so we have a big issue with powdery mildew so one thing to try and avoid it is by watering at the base of your plants instead of right on the top of your plants because the leaves don't suck in that water the roots do keep that in mind now keep in mind as well different plants require different measurements of water now in our big garden and we don't have to water in our big garden today because it rained yesterday we had a, a storm come through yesterday so we won't need to apply any water to our big garden uh which is good um that rain took care of a lot of the work which is one really cool thing about having a big garden um and a whole bunch of plants outside is because sometimes nature will do its thing for you um and it's so nice if you ever hear a gardener say oh i just can't wait for it to rain there's a reason why they can't wait for it to rain and that reason is so they have less work to do um mother nature can be very helpful for us at times sometimes she can be against us um it's just the it's just a gamble. It depends on what you got going on. She can be with you or she can be with, be against you. Um, and I'm just watering all these guys here. Just right at the base. Now, let's say you're trying to add decoration to your pots. Want a better way to water than just buy a watering can? Well one thing you can definitely do is and i'm going to show you and i have this in my herb pot is these globes now these globes globes do go quickly some people don't like them some people do but if you're a kind of person that just wants to let's just go ahead and say it sit it and leave it <laughs> now it sounds lazy yes um it kind of is in a sense just depends on how you look at it not calling nobody lazy everybody has their preferences but if you're a kind of person that wants to sit it and leave it well that's one good way it'll keep the soil pretty much moist and keep it from drying out which is what you want one thing I wouldn't recommend doing is for those globes I definitely think they work good for big pots and things like that but if you're like, let's just use a 
prime example, our big garden, for example, where the ground is everywhere. Well, if you're wanting to use those globes, well, slight problem. That globe is going to try and water everything that it's surrounded. That soil, the ground, is going to soak it all up like no tomorrow. Now, one thing that they are good for is like big pots like these. You can use a globe in that. Now, planting in ground is a lot different than planting in pots. You have more tools, more different things you can do with your plants compared to doing it in ground. In ground, our plants get bigger, big, more to maintain, and more to keep up with. But container gardening, compact, small, and it's workable. But when you have a big garden like this, best thing to do is put in an irrigation system to where you have drips of water going to your plants down your rows. So that way you don't have to worry about spraying it like this and getting water on your leaves. It's always better to water at the base. Now, let's talk about when watering during the fall and uh, winter time. During these times, you water less. You don't have to water as much because it takes a lot longer for the soil to dry up. And with that being said, you don't have to water so much. You don't have to water every two to three days. You might have to water once a week or every two weeks. Like the rain we had yesterday, we probably won't have to water until next week, which is less work for me, which currently there's not a whole lot going on, but we still have some growth and the growth that we have currently is just like, okay, we'll come out here, check on y'all every day. We'll still fertilize you once a week um, and harvest when everything's ready to harvest. Um, our greens, our lettuces that we harvest, those we come out here and harvest on a daily or every other day whenever we want some salads or whenever we need lettuce for burgers or anything like that. Um, it's... It's all doing its own thing. We make sure we feed, we fertilize, um, and make sure everything's good and nutritious. So getting a little bit of water on some leaves, especially during the winter time, it's not too bad because the powdery mildew isn't so bad during the winter time because there's not so much growth going on during these times. But during the spring and summertime, that's when you gotta really be busy. And any farmer, gardener, anybody will tell you that spring, not spring, but fall and winter are your slow times. Spring and summer, that's when everything gets busy, everything's so green and luxurious, and it's it's not freezing cold to where you're going to freeze your badonk donk off. Okay. <laughs> but remember guys, water at the base. See what your water is looking like. If you're in the city, let your water sit for 24 to 48 hours. Get all those nasty things out of that water. If you have the option, do a rain barrel. Catch your rainwater. It's a lot more natural and a lot better for the plants. It's better than well water or city water, in my opinion. <laughs> now let's talk about equipment. Nozzles, sprayer nozzles. You can get a long neck sprayer nozzle, which has a long wand, um, and you don't have to bend down to water. Um, that's one option. You can use the short nozzles where you gotta get down there and hold it down to the base. One thing you don't want to do though is over water on the leaves because of that powdery mildew. So there's different things you can do but always keep in mind no matter what tool you're using always water at the base. Well guys I hope you found this watering video helpful to you all. I am gonna go inside and get dinner finished up. I will see you guys next time. Stay tuned for our new videos. Deuces!